Is DLSS 4.5 an actual game changer? Well, I'm going to tell you DLSS 4.5 isn't just DLSS but newer, it changes how frames are created and how the upscaler thinks and why that matters. There are real two upgrades here. Number one, a smarter upscaler, second gen transformer super resolution. Older DLSS versions use a simpler AI model. DLSS 4 switched to a transformer model, which was already a big leap. DLSS 4.5 upgrades that transformer once again. The AI understands scenes much better over time. It also causes less shimmering in the distant objects and even less ghosting behind moving characters. Finer details hold together better instead of crawling or just flickering. This isn't just about making it photo ready for scenes like Cyberpunk 2077, it's really about motion looking a bit more stable when you play your games. And even in some games, the LSS 4.5 quality can genuinely look cleaner than native, especially with ray tracing and pad tracing on. I know that sounds like Nvidia's marketing BS, but you can actually see it in the foliage, the geometry, and even in the reflections. And number two is the dynamic multi-frame generation, which is allegedly the big one, as Nvidia likes to say. DLSS frame generation used to be pretty rigid. You generate a fixed number of AI frames whether the game needed them or not. DLSS 4.5 changes that completely. Now it's dynamic. The system will actually watch your frame rates and even your display refresh rates and adjust on how many frames it generates in real time. Instead of forcing frame generation consistently, it will ramp up when it absolutely needs it and won't use the frame generation when your system does not. So it doesn't feel fake. <laughs> fake frames. Six times the frame generation is also a large change, which is DLSS 4.5 can generate up to every five frames for every frame. That's how Nvidia got those crazy and insane numbers when you see their Nvidia showcase. But here is the truth of everything. This is going to be for very high refresh rate setups and not every game will be able to push six times the frames. It's mostly useful with pad tracing and heavy ray tracing. And this isn't meant for fake frames, it's meant to make modern rendering actually playable at extreme settings. Now here is the hard truth of things. The stuff is going to be compute heavy. Now the RTX 50 series will benefit the most because its hardware is designed for this. Now the RTX 40 series will see some performance gains just with a bit more leverage. The RTX 4090 will certainly get the most out of DLSS 4.5. Now when it comes to RTX 20 and 30 series, it is a new upscaler, but expect to be a heavy draw from either the 20 or 30 series card. Now DLSS 4.5 is in some sort of miracle, because if your GPU is struggling, it's not going to save you. But if your GPU bound by ray tracing or even pad tracing, it can truly change up the way you play. Now, DLSS 4.5 isn't about getting the higher FPS frames, the higher FPS numbers. It's about making modern, heavy rendering techniques playable without destroying or fringing your image. It gives you better AI reconstruction and better frame generation with much smoother gameplay that actually feels clean. If you're interested in getting DLSS 4.5 and you're completely new to having an NVIDIA graphics card, first off, I'd like to congratulate you. And second off, you have to make sure to get the proper drivers. For example, say if you obtained a GeForce RTX 5070, you just download your Windows version, Windows 11, for example, as most people, and then find it. And from here, you're going to download the game ready driver. So just click view and click download. Once you download it and go through the prompts, make sure to have a clean installation completely installed. That way you can have, in order to enable DLSS 4, you must have the up-to-date version of NVIDIA's app. If you haven't done so, make sure you do. As mentioned, open up NVIDIA's app and on the left tab here, you're going to hit graphics. For example, we could go into Doom 
and from here you can actually set your DLSS override model presets. From here you just click into it, now you can use custom, recommend it, use 3D app or use global. Now most people will go through global as that is the more simple way to certainly do so, but if you prefer a specific game for some reason, for example if you want to use it on Doom Dark Ages you go to custom and you choose your presets. Now. I will explain presets in just a moment because I do want to go quickly over global settings because the reason being is because each specific game you can choose to select whether to enable DLSS or not if you want to do it per game. Now global settings, meaning for every single game, you click the global settings up here on to the top. And then you go to DLSS override model presets and here you just click this arrow. From here you go to custom and then you can use the correct setting. Now you can go to recommended settings or for most people which is really easy enough or just go to custom uh, where you can select your own type of model. The presets do not really increase FPS meaningfully. It's no different than going to recommend it. Now the difference are going to be mostly visual and not really true to performance. Now some games already have a hard lock on the preset internally, forcing the presets can break the DLSS in rare cases. Now. I'm going to explain what the DLSS presets are actually are. Now preset A, which is going to be old with a softer image, less aggressive reconstruction, and it's pretty obsolete. Most people are not going to touch this. Preset B is slightly sharper than A, very safe to use, but again, nobody uses it. Preset C, early attempt at motion stability, and you still get quite a bit of ghosting on it and it's also depreciated. Now the truth of the matter is, everything is pretty much depreciated until you go further down the list and get a bit closer to uh, K. Now preset K is definitely one of the more aggressive presets and it does help increase the detail of reconstruction. It's also the best stability in many games and but it does cost a bit higher on the GPU side. Now, NVIDIA increases it using this with the LSS 3.7 and higher. Now, preset L is going to be pretty much DLSS 4, which most are familiar with, which is one of the top most aggressive presets you can really put, and it increases the top detail of reconstruction, and it gives you less, it gives you more stability in games, which is going to be much higher than K. This is when the transformer model actually kicks in, but you still can experience some ghosting and some shimmering and some other issues that you may not want. Preset M, which is going to be new at 4.5. This is going to be the new default transformer model for DLSS uh, Super Resolution Performance Mode under DLSS 4.5. Now this is going to be the latest and the best neural net trained with a bigger data set and better temporal consistency. It targets higher quality and reduces ghosting artifacts versus the older DLSS 4 models such as Preset L and even preset K. It's also optimized for performance mode, so it's going to be tuned for the best blend of detail and motion clarity with heavy compute model. Now it's going to be more sharper, and it's also going to be more stable than preset K with the same base upscaling mode. Now, just to give you a note guys, because it uses the new second generation transformer model, it costs more GPU tensor resources than older models, especially on the 20 and 30 series without FP8 acceleration. So the best choice for DLSS performance with 4.5, especially if you're on the 40 or 50 series. But it's going to be a bit overkill for a lot of the older cards under the 40 series. This is what you're going to see enthusiasts forcing, especially now, is going to be between K to M. So what I recommend, if you choose to actually manually set it, M is going to be best for the top quality in most modern games. The top ray tracing or even path tracing. Now preset K is going to be great for image quality and a lot of great games. It's going to be a bit softer than L, which is L is DLSS 4, which you, again, you can experience some a bit of ghosting when you are in it. 
and it gives you the weird frame generation where it's not going to feel as comfortable. So I'm going to explain a bit about the LSS Swapper. This is something I highly recommend everyone to get, especially if you want to take advantage of DLSS 4.5. The game has to feature some sort of DLSS. Now, DLSS Swapper is going to be basically a quality of life tool for a lot of PC gamers out there. All it really does is change out the DLSS version in a game. For example, Batman Arkham Knights. You don't have to, you're, you're not going to have to dig through the folders and manually replace the files. So there's not going to be any extra hassle. Now, a lot of games that are shipped with the older DLSS versions are usually never touched again. NVIDIA will always improve DLSS. We all know that. It's going to have better image stability and less ghosting every single time, especially when ray tracing is evolved. Now, DLSS Swapper will let you take advantage of the new DLSS versions, even if the developer hasn't touched it. <laughs> rock steady what's going to happen in the background is that every dlss game called the nvngx underscore dlss dot dll the file controls how dlss works in that in that game so what dlss swapper will do is find the actual file in your system shows you which version that they are using and it will offer you to replace that file now, this won't touch your drivers and it won't mess up your windows, most importantly. And you can even undo it any time. In order to get the LSS Swapper, just make sure to check down the description box down below as I have it. It's going to be a GitHub page. Just make sure to hit the released file and then right from here, you're going to click the installer and you're just going to just open up the file, click yes, and then just install it into your system. So as soon as you get the LSS Swapper in your system, it'll look like this, and you're gonna click OK. So a note for multiplayer games while swapping, it's gonna be considered uh, cheating. So don't do it for any multiplayer games. I think that's going to be uh, pretty obvious. So I wouldn't recommend doing it on things like Elden Ring. Now it's going to detect a lot of the DLSS versions in each model. So if you want to swap it out, and you want to make sure to have the most current version, for example, the perfect game for this would be like Final Fantasy 15. So if you want to click it, it says version 1.01.11. We want it on preset M, change it over to 1.32, which is the newest one. Click swap, and there it will simply just swap over the version of it. And now click close. Now you have the most up-to-date version and you have preset M that is going to be up-to-date. Now it simply changes out the DLL to make it more compatible with the newer version and it's going to make the game look much better. You take advantage of the LSS 4.5. Fam, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. This is Chris Muzo, signing out.